Oh man, we tested 13 different types of knots, three times each, all just to find out they all break around 50% of the MBS. Got a lot of goodies in this one, including some bonus ones, of course, in this episode of How Not to Highline. Hi, I'm Ryan Jinx, and welcome to our new Slack Snap Lab. <laughs> so I think that intro is funny because we did this test like six months ago when we were just building out this lab. And uh, Carl Mitchell tied, labeled, and shipped all these knots and ropes to us, which is super helpful because sample prep is a huge part of brick tests. And I always have a dozen videos in the bank, which is how we're able to upload regularly, but uh, I was going to, we, well, we have 39 samples plus some bonus ones. So that's like a lot to process. Plus we were decorating. So I was going to come up with a nice conclusion for you guys. Never really got around to that because I researched the MBS of the rope because that's relevant to the, the breaking strength of these knots, right? So I ended up going down a rabbit trail with these ropes, a seven millimeter Edelweiss rope, which is what is in the video you're about to see is a 9.8 kilonewton MBS, or minimum breaking strength. Now this was super interesting because some of our samples, spoiler alert, was nine-ish kilonewtons, and knots usually reduce the strength of the MBS. So I looked up the Edelrid seven millimeter rope as well, which is exactly the same material, polymid, nylon, same rope. It's the same rope, seven, kilo, seven millimeters. So why does Edelrid say there's this 14 kilonewtons? That's a, five additional. That's more than 50% stronger than Edelweiss is claiming. So I emailed Edelrid and said, why is your rope 14 kilonewtons? So Edelrid responded with this. Our power lock has a 14 kilonewton MBS because we make the best gear in the game. Technical data, it's made of polymer nylon. Not sure why Edelweiss doesn't compare. Maybe ask them. All right. Well, I never got around to asking them because that's just a rabbit trail and I'm clearly making progress here. And uh, the crane, we just finished putting the new cable on there. So now we can start assembling the drop tower. Spoiler alert. Anyways, uh, yeah, so MBS. That's literally the next video I'm going to film is how that works and why it's not a number you can always rely on. Either way, you're probably not gonna die if you use rated gear in any normal use. Please put in the comments below why you think there's a discrepancy between the two companies. I think one is using a diverter and the other one is maybe testing in knots because there's no way we're getting full strength with the rope in this video that you're gonna see. Anyways, I wish it, the MBS came with context. I wish gear companies would put out information for us to not have to trust them, but to in these contexts, this is what it breaks at so we can do our own research. I feel smart enough as an end user to deserve that information. But I digress. We're just testing knots in this video. So let's go back to it. Carl Mitchell was excited about these specific knots. And so he tied them in a straight line and in a bend or in a circle. So we can kind of compare. Now this is a lot of data. So you can go in the timestamps below to the knots you want to see, or just read the description on, we'll have everything in there. So you don't have to watch them all break. Uh, but there's a little bit, it's interesting how they break more than the fact that they all break super good enough, except uh, two ends joined together with a butterfly. Mm, that was a good one. Anyways, a six month younger Ryan is now going to explain all the knots here on the floor and then we'll get to breaking. Okay, here is a lot to go over. <laughs> we have a Zeppelin loop. It's Zeppelin on both sides. Then you have a Zeppelin loop with a whip on it. You can see here, the whip holds the tail. Then butterfly loop is on both ends here. A figure eight loop, which is what I am most familiar with, with the tail tied off. A revere loop, I've never even heard of this one before. And here's some good old bolins. If you are a bolinary, because I know there's like five ways to tie this, then here you go. Maybe we can do a whole series on bolins later. Loops is what you call bends, apparently. I'm learning stuff here. 
Okay, so we are starting with the Zeppelin bend. That is a pretty neat looking knot, a revere bend. Here you go. Wow, butterfly bend. You have the Flemish. That is a figure eight. That is something I've tied a lot of and did not know is called a Flemish. No, I know what this one is. It's a double fisherman's. That is something I do. And here we have a butterfly bend two. And then you have the sheet bend, which I still have not mastered. Broken the knot on the other side. See the end there. Zeppelin loop with a whip. Broken the knot, shocker. Um, we got the same result as the first one we tested. Sample 1096, Zeppelin loop. Broke on this side. This overhand here, barrel knot that was here, um, is ha has come untied. And then the one on this side, it looks like it just kept slipping through until it cut here. Um, same as the last test, we have the, the those backups there, there, that overhand or barrel knot. Uh, broken the knot, um, very similar to the last one. It, it pulled through this. Uh, this knot is still intact, though real tight. We've got a Zeppelin loop with those backup knots. Um, yeah, broke here, pulled through that backup knot. Um, this is a butterfly loop and it has the um, barrel knot back up overhand. So knot looks intact over here. We'll go check the other side. Uh, there's not much of a knot left here. That's most likely the backup knot there. And then what's left of the butterfly. Sample 1100, another butterfly. Um, broken the knot on this side, and as you can see, in the, as on the last sample, it leaves us um, two nice little overhands there. One for the backup knot, barrel knot, and then that's part of the butterfly loop. Uh, this is the third butterfly loop sample. Uh, we had a failure on this side. This is a figure eight loop, and he has these overhand backups. Looks like it broke on this side. Uh, this side's real tight. We're thinking that the stated um, MBS of 9.8 kilonewtons is based on testing with a figure eight. Uh, that looks pretty likely. Uh, another figure eight loop. Uh, we got a break in the knot on the other side. This is our third figure eight loop. Uh, we got failure on the hydraulic side. This is a reaver loop, and it does not look like it has any sort of backup, but I am not familiar with this uh, knot. Broke on this side. The whole thing just kind of falls apart once it's broken. This one, of course, is very tight. This is the second reaver loop that we are testing. Um, so this is the second time it's broken on this side. Uh, looks super similar to the last test. This is our third reaver loop. Let's break it. Something interesting about this test is all of the samples broke on the dyno side. 
these are Bolands or whatever variation of that that has the bitter end inside of the loop. Rope got cut in the knot, um, but it appeared that the, the tail was creeping um, through the knot. Second bowline sample. Um, very interested to see what happens here. Uh, this is the variation of the bowline with the bitter end inside the loop. We've got a failure in the knot. Kind of looked like it was slipping, but this doesn't look much shorter. This is our third bowline. I have moved this tape so it's right next to the knot. And I'm curious if that will show us um, how much this moves. Uh, looking pretty similar to all the other ones. Um, broke on the static side. Um, we have now moved on to bins. This is a double fisherman's bend. Oh, okay. It failed on the carabiner. This did not break. Still solid. Second double fisherman's. It's nice that I don't have to go over the whole shop to find the piece. Uh, broke on the pulling side. Uh, this is our third double fisherman bend. So, looks like we had um, a break on the pulling side. Knot is still there. Don't think you could untie it. Oh, it flipped. It didn't break in the knot. Nope. Shocker. Zeppelin bin, take two. And I'll have to watch the video again, but it definitely looks like it broke in the knot. This is our third Zeppelin bin. Let's see what happens. This is a butterfly bend. Uh, this one has the ends terminated sticking straight out. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have gotten our third type of result. Butterfly bend with parallel uh, strands Xing it. That might break. All right, like Ryan said, broke at the knot. Our third uh, butterfly bend with the parallel um, ends terminated. We do have a, a cut end here as opposed to it pulling all the way through. There's the remaining knot. This is more butterfly bends, but they have a different termination. They're going out different sides of the knot. This, if somebody showed me this and said this is a butterfly knot, I would disagree with them. So the ends are perpendicular to the bend. Yeah, so slipped there. Um, looks very similar to the last test. This is our third butterfly bend with uh, the ends per perpendicular to the bend. And we're going to see if it um, slips all the way through. That's getting pretty familiar. This is a... Reaver bend. Take a look at that guy. I'm going to say it broke at the carabiner. Um, that knot is still intact. This is our second reaver bend. Pretty sure that failed at the carabiner. Reaver bend. Third test sample 1125. Yeah, I'm going to say broken the knot, these being the two, two ends on the outside. This is the first of the Flemish bends. Let's see what they break at. This is really, this doesn't feel like it was broken over a, a carabiner, and I think the knot was further away. Flemish bend, take two. Um, yeah, I'm going to call that breaking in the knot. Feminist bend number three, go! It's all the way down here. 
There we go, Flemish Ben number three. And that looks like it failed very similarly to the other ones, and I'm gonna say that's a knot. This is a sheet bend. This is our first sheet bend sample. Oh, yeah, it was. So, as you can clearly see in the video, it just unravels. Second sheet bend. It unravels just like the last one. Sheet bend, take three. Well, at least it's kind of cool as it unravels. This cord was already used in the Alpine Butterfly with ends perpendicular to the bend, um, and it slipped. You can see some um, heat damage there, uh, friction damage maybe. Um, we were curious if you tied a normal normal alpine butterfly and uh, pulled it if it would pop out under enough tension. Most times when I use this, I have something clipped into it here, which would prevent it from popping out and would probably cut in here somewhere. Uh, but this is something we were curious about and we had long enough links because these pulled out. So let's see what happens. So we're looking at almost six kilonewtons right there. Everything's really starting to tighten up. Oh, it's getting very small. All right, broken the knot at 14.9 kilonewtons. Wow, can't believe you made it to the end of this video. Uh, that was a lot to test. The conclusion is that was too many samples per video and with the drop tower, after we confirm that knots break the same, or don't confirm they don't, that slow pull versus a dynamic shock, how they break knots, after we understand how to break knots, we'll do a how not with a K to tie ropes or something like that and do break tests for one knot and show how to tie it in the video, maybe pull it to four kilonewtons, show how hard it is to untie that, and then break test it in different diameter ropes, maybe in webbing, in different ways, so you really just understand this one knot. And then you can kind of binge watch the knots you wanna see with very little of me talking, five minute edits, everything's pretty tight, seven mil, nine mil, 11 mil ropes, dynamic versus static. Once we learn how knots work, we can do that. I would really like your feedback on that. Uh, check out the top comment, and uh, maybe I'll put like a Discord, we'll maybe try a Discord thing and you can kind of all have this community chat on how you want to see us make knot videos. We're talking about making like a hundred videos on knots over the next few years. I really want the format to be exactly what you want. And I want to determine that before we even start doing knot videos. This was kind of just showing us how complex it gets. And if we get into too many variables, it's, uh, it's a lot of data and it doesn't feel like that good of an episode or at least entertaining. So yeah. Um, your feedback is appreciated and your donations and going to the shop page and clicking affiliate links since that's how I try to live on. Anyways, I look forward to your feedback and we'll see you on the next video. Cheers.